bag check. Airline tickets check. Hopefully I got everything. Make sure I got my cell phone, my batteries charged up. Hey, what's up? What's good, guys? This is Vahography. I'm Vahagin, your rock and roll photographer. So what's happening, guys? As you could see, I was just on my way out the door, just about to go board a plane and shoot a destination photo gig. Oh, wait a minute. I'm forgetting the most important thing. Hold on one second. You don't want to forget your camera on a photo gig, right? <laughs> Got it. So I was just shooting something around the house the other day and uh, it's right here. So before I head out, I thought I'd make a video for you guys. 10 mistakes I made when I just started shooting, photographing weddings. Thinking back on it now, I wonder how could I have made such mistakes? But it happens, you make these mistakes as a starter, as a beginner wedding photographer. These are commonly known mistakes that photographers make. I made these mistakes, I'm guilty of these mistakes, and I'm gonna go through them right now. You guys ready? Let's do this. Okay, so number one mistake I made when I just started shooting weddings. I shot everything in 2.8 because I thought as a young photographer, that's the way you do things. It's a 2.8 lens. My other photographer friends would talk about how awesome you have a 2.8 lens. And you know, back then I was young. I wasn't really educated into what actually 2.8 really means. And I thought it was just cool shooting everything at 2.8. I thought that's what my settings had to be on. I thought it was very cool shooting everything at 2.8. Not knowing that my photos were not coming out as sharp as I thought. You know, I thought it would be cool to just keep it at 2.8. The shallow depth of field is nice. Let me keep everything at 2.8. And I did that. So as a result, a lot of my shots weren't as sharp as I wanted them to be. When you shoot wide open, that happens, guys. The photos are not as sharp. Mistake number two. I didn't have a backup camera body. This is crucial guys, especially if you're a professional photographer, if you're getting paid to shoot someone's wedding, you should have two camera bodies guys. Don't only rely on one body. I talk about this on my other videos. Two bodies is crucial. Number one, for backup purposes, in case camera one goes down, you have camera two to fall back on and also, if you're shooting with a 7200 and a 2470, you don't have to change lenses. It makes for a convenient day, convenient shooting experience, guys. Always have a backup second body when you go out and shoot weddings. Mistake number three, not having enough AA batteries for my speed lights. I had a lot of AA batteries and I thought it would last me the whole night. However, as a beginner, I would shoot a lot of pictures at weddings and boom, one after the other, boom, 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 it would quickly drain my batteries. So I would run out of AA batteries for my speed light. So what ended up happening is I had to go to a store, buy some more batteries, and that mistake can be easily corrected and not made if you just have enough batteries for the whole day. Mistake number four, this has to do with batteries as well, and it, this was a costly mistake. When I just started shooting weddings, I wasn't shooting with chargeable batteries, rechargeable batteries, and I would, it cost me a lot of money to buy all these batteries and I would never stock up on chargeable batteries. Always get a lot of rechargeables, guys. They last longer, you can use them again over and over and over again and it'll save you money along the way, guys. And also, the refresh time on the flash is much faster with rechargeable batteries than regular non-chargeable ones. Mistake number five, always using my flash when I didn't have to. And also, we'll group this mistake with that too, always shooting the flash directly. Back then when I just started out, I didn't know how to bounce my flash. I didn't know lighting that well. So I, what I would do is I would shoot with the camera flash on the, on the body straight on. When I would do portraits, it would be always straight on the subject. And the result of that is unflattering, burning the highlights, regular photos. I quickly read up on that and how to get better results with flash photography and I started bouncing my light. I started diffusing my light as well. So to avoid this mistake, kind of learn the basics on flash photography before you go and shoot your first wedding. Mistake number six, not shooting raw. Huge mistake I made when I just started shooting weddings with a digital camera, not shooting raw. Shooting raw is so, so much better for post-processing. When you're editing the photos in Lightroom or whatever software you use, you just have more control over what you can do post-processing with the image. It's the closest thing to a digital negative when you're shooting digital when you shoot RAW instead of JPEG. Mistake number seven, not charging enough 
or not charging at all sometimes. In the beginning, I had to build up my portfolio and I started quickly adapting to wedding photography and my pricing was very low and sometimes I would not charge at all. So make sure you charge enough for your services. You're gonna be there the whole day, working the whole day. If your photos are good enough to charge your price, make sure the prices are good enough for you. You're satisfied. Remember, you're there a long time. Don't undervalue your photography. Make sure you do that, guys. I was charging very little or not charging at all in the beginning. Mistake number eight, saying yes to everything the bride and groom would request just to please them. You know, in the beginning, you want to please everybody. But let me tell you something, you cannot please everybody. No matter what you do, you cannot please everybody. Every request, I would go out of my way. For example, I would charge a set amount of price for the wedding. And they said, you know what? We want to go to the beach next week. Can you do a photo shoot? We get all dressed up again. Let's go to the beach and do a photo shoot. I would say, no problem, guys, just to make you guys happy. We'll do that shoot too, but I wouldn't extra charge for that. So I would say yes to every request in the beginning. And if you need to charge extra for extra services, do that guys. Mistake number nine, not having a custom camera bag for my cameras and lenses. So in the beginning, I would not have a nice bag. I would have a bag that was just generic. My cameras and lenses would fly all over the place when I'm driving and they'd get scratched up and damaged. So I really didn't care for a bag. I thought if I had the great camera and great lens, a bag could come secondary. The bag is just as important as your camera and lens, guys. You wanna house it in a nice case, good quality bag. So I'll put a link in the description down below if you're looking for a nice case. I recommend Think Tank, they make really good stuff. And the 10th mistake I made when I just started shooting weddings, using the stock strap that comes with your camera body. Yeah, that thing is cheap, that thing sucks. Yeah, it says the name of the camera, but who cares? It would slide off my shoulder. So what I do now is I use a double harness strap. Two brands that I really like is Black Rapid and Holdfast Gear. Again, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can check those straps out. Man, that Black Rapid strap is awesome. If it's comfortable, it's great, it's built well, and it holds your camera, and it's very easy to use, guys. Never use your stock strap that comes with the camera. Big mistake. <laughs> And a bonus mistake for you guys, make sure your lenses are clean before you head out and shoot your gig, guys. You don't want smudge marks on your lenses. You don't want it to affect the picture at all. So keep a microfiber cloth in your camera bag at all times. You always want to have your lenses clean from fingerprints, from grease, from anything, from dust. Clean your lenses before you head out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys could learn from my mistakes that I made when I was just starting out in wedding photography. Like and subscribe to my channel, Vahography, for more videos just like this one, guys. Leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your mistakes you wish you had made and you learned from them when you just started shooting weddings. Thanks for watching. Once again, this is Vahography. I'm Vahagen, your rock and roll photographer. See you on the next video.